Gia, who are here. Uh, I'm very grateful and honored to also for the presence of Noel Malcolm and Sir Jeffrey Nice, who you have here, as well as other dignitaries and friends who've come. I would like to tell you very briefly about how this book came to be. I had long wanted to do something on Chamaria and the Chams simply because there was not much information on the, in, on the English language book market. There were a few scholarly articles and a handful, handful of older books published in Greece, as well as a couple of new books published in Tirana, though rather badly translated into English. What was missing was a major handbook of objective documentary information. It came as no surprise to me, I must say, that Beto Nadestani, founder of the Center for Albanian Studies here in London, had been rummaging once again in foreign office archives and had managed to find about a hundred historical texts documenting the history of Chamaria in the first half of the 20th century. The material for a book was there, basically, Betona had the texts, and I had the audacity to put them together into book form, adding an introduction, bibliography, notes, and some translated material of my own. We've tried very much in this work not to polemicize or to whip up passions of decades gone by, and simply present historical documents that readers may use for a better understanding of the Cham issue. Those who have seen the book will have noticed a quotation on the back cover written by Noel Malcolm. Noel is, I think, now old enough, and I believe indeed gray enough, for us to designate him here officially as the eminence grise of Albanian studies in Britain. What he says is usually judicious and meaningful. And what he said on this occasion was, the fate of the Cham Albanians is one of modern European history's darker secrets. And I think this is very well put. Many of you will not be aware that to this very day, Albanians born in Greek Chamaria, who want to visit the land of their birth, most of them being over the age of 80, are regularly turned back at the Greek-Albanian border. On occasion, their passports are torn up in front of their eyes out of some irrational fear that these people, little old ladies for the most part, could destabilize the Greek state. Now, let me put it clearly that no one, least of all the Chams, wants to destabilize the Greek state. Albania and Greece now have excellent relations, and the Albanian and Greek peoples get along very well. They have more in common with one another than either of them would admit. Yet, always on the back burner is the Cham issue, smoldering, sometimes flaming up, sometimes dying down. What is it the Chams want? Well, you would have to ask them, and there are some here. My opinion is that there is a lingering sentiment of victimization among the Chams, something admittedly not uncommon in the Balkans in general. They want recognition of the injustice done to them when they were expelled en masse from their homeland in the Second World War as a form of collective punishment, like that suffered by the Crimean Tatars or the Volga Germans. Some of them would like to go back to their native Chamaria. Others would like to reclaim their ancestral property there. But these issues can be very easily solved. There is much goodwill on both sides of the border now, and I am convinced that if we manage to throw some light onto one of modern European history's darker secrets, and come to terms with the Cham issue, we can bring these two peoples even closer together. Thanks very much.
Thank you.